this is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. I have got a beautiful classic today. We're actually going to do a little tribute to Gary Brooker today by learning A Wider Shade of Pale by Proko Harum, of course. This is a beautiful song that kind of revolves around the same chord progression, kind of just really is moving. Um, uh, the chord progression is just beautiful throughout the entire thing. And it's just got a couple of different endings depending on if you're at the end of the the instrumental section, like the intro, where the Hammond organs playing the melody, um, or kind of taking the melody, or the verse, or the chorus. But other than that, they, they all contain the same chord progression, just a little different ending for each one. So we'll, we'll be able to get to it pretty quick, I think. Um, now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring the notification bell so you know when I see a new video. And if you like and comment on the videos, it really helps it reach more people and helps the channel out, helps me out a lot. Uh, so I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, um, the best way to do it, and actually get something out of it for yourself, is join My Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to it in the description below. Um, my Guitar Academy contains all of my guitar courses, covering everything from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. Um, I go live every Saturday, just like I'm a live video chat just with Academy members, so you can get your questions answered in real time every week. And you also get personal support uh, from me beyond that. So uh, if you click that link below, you'll get a free seven day trial. So please go check it out. All right, so let's jump into the track. I'm, uh, I'm in standard tuning here. Um, and like I said, this has kind of the same uh, chord progression that goes throughout um, pretty much all the sections um, with just slight variations um, here or there. So, uh, so now the actual progression itself is just from the very beginning. We have this little um, Bach-esque um, Hammond organ melody being played. Uh, but the chord progression underneath it is this. Come in, which I'm not gonna sing it because I would completely suck at it. It's amazing vocal, but it there's so much going on um, with the, the lyrics that I'm not even gonna attempt. So we're gonna start here with um, a C major chord, but we're gonna add you know your typical C major open chord, but we're gonna add this third fret on the high E string. It's a little bit different voicing of a C major chord than you'll typically see. Now. I'm trying to match what's going on with um, the instrumentation. Obviously, there's not a guitar on this, so it's like piano and some um, other instrumentation, the organ and stuff. So I'm trying to get those voicings a little bit closer to the voicings on guitar. So that's you might see these played in slightly different ways if you've seen other variation uh, kind of arrangements of this. This is kind of my own. Um, there's a couple of chords that you're going gonna to see, like uh, you know, I always kind of check up and see sheet music that's kind of written for this stuff. Um, a lot of it is is wrong in, in parts, uh, I feel, and I'll show you where, where I mean and when that happens. Uh, but beyond that, the chords themselves can be played slightly differently, just your own way of playing it. So I'm trying to make it kind of, kind of have the same personality as the instrumentation of the original recording, not just play the straight chords. So let's start here with that C major with the three on the, the third fret there on top, the G on top. It's still just a C. And then from there, it goes to an E minor chord in second inversion. And we're still going to keep that G on top, though. So that's just a second fret there on the A string, second fret there on the D, open G, open B, and like I said, that third fret stays there on the high E string. Now when you're going through this progression, you might want to go... Pick the bass note right before you move to the next chord. It kind of gives it that kind of same movement that they do in the song. It 
kind of that kind of thing if, if you want to do it really kind of make it sound like that uh, or you could just strum across it sounds fine too so we have that C to the E minor from there we go to a straight A minor chord all right so we have this I'm sorry, one more time. And now we're going to move to the G in the bass. And what we play here is a C major chord with the fifth in the bass. So he does this to a lot, a lot of songs. There's a lot of second inversion triads going on in this song. Um, so you saw one, the second chord. E minor with the B in the bass. That's a second version E minor. And then normal root position A minor, but then the next chord is a second inversion C major. So that's basically just that regular C major here, right? Move over and grab that third fret on the low E string though. That's a G. That's the fifth of the chord, so that means a second version C major. And you're gonna replace that note that you picked up on the A string there with your pinky. Now we're going to, so that's kind of like, we keep going through these sequence of chords. The next chord is going to be an F major bar chord. So if you don't know that, it's a full bar at the first fret, second fret there on the uh, G string, third fret on the D, and uh, third fret on the A. Now this next chord is the one that I see notated incorrectly on a lot of chord charts, you know. When I'm trying to look around and see, people are doing it like that, which is in, an, technically it's an F major 7 chord in 3rd inversion, so it's an F over an E, which sounds awful. Um, it's typically not, it's avoided in most music because of the minor ninths. It's a very dissonant sound. It's not a voicing you're going to really see of a, of a major 7th chord with the 7th in the bass very often because of that. Doesn't really work. What's actually happening in the recording is the Fs, all the Fs of this F major chord are going moving down to an E. Not only the bottom note, but the, the higher one and the one in the middle. So when that happens, it becomes an A minor triad, and once again, it's another second inversion triad. It's an A minor with E in the bass. So we have... Sounds a lot better than... Which is the majority of the way you see it notated. Completely wrong. Anyway. So after that A minor with E in the bass, it goes to a D minor triad. Now I'm not going to detail these notes if it's just a simple basic open position chord that you should know anyway. You should probably not learn it from a song lesson video. Uh, I'm not going to detail how to play each one of those. But if it's uh, if, you, if you need help with those, go to guitarlessons365.com, click on free lessons, and click on beginner. You'll see all these chords just kind of a five minute long video just taking you through each one of these so it's a better way to learn them so D minor and then the next movement we do we're going to keep holding that D minor we're just now going to play a C in the bass so what is that so when you do that that is a D minor seventh chord in third inversion so you got C in the bass so he's playing a lot of inversions so from that F chord we have this So, so far through, um, we have two sets. You can look at as two sets of a four chord progression. So we have this. All right, so the next four chords we're gonna deal with are going to be the last set of four chords in the progression. So it's really kind of a 12 chord progression that keeps going over and over again. This is going to sound like this. All 
All right, so that's gonna be um, a G major chord. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this, this F in the bass, so put it. It's kind of just, it's kind of the best way to kind of play it. It's just that G voicing and hold those notes on top. And when I go to that F in the bass, I'm holding, I'm, I still got an open D and G string there along with the third fret of the B and the high E, but I'm, I'm, I'm muting that A string. So. Uh, and then we go to an E minor. Standard E minor triad. And then we go to another inversion, uh, which is, we're playing a, a G7 here, but we have D in the bass. So we played a G7 here, or it implied it. We don't have the third there, but it's still kind of implying it. And then E minor, and then to a, another G7 here, but would open the uh, D string in the bass. Obviously, the voicings are done on different instruments, so we're just kind of doing our version of this. It's an easy way of playing this. First fret on the high E string, and then the open B, open G, and open D. You want that D string to be the low note. So all together, the chord progression. So that's going to be the progression we're going to do a lot in this. Now we get to the, if we're still in the intro here, we have an ending here, which is just a C major chord to an F. And I did a little kind of opening E before that open E string before I get to the F. And then here, this chord that you saw me do in the intro. It's a weird way of playing a dominant a G7 chord. I, I I just liked it. I think it sounded closer to what's going on on the original recording. Uh, and it, it allows you to easily do that little bass line as well, too, that happens. So you can just play this just a million different ways, whatever you wanted to do. I like this way. So it's a G7 chord, however you want to play a G7. Um, so what I'm doing here is a third fret on the low E. For now, I'm muting the A string. Third fret there on the uh, D string. Open G. Third fret there on the B. Third fret on the high E string. So it kind of sounds like, because all those notes are present, the, the flat seven, but also that D is in there. And then from there we have go to the open A string, it's in the bass instead of the G. You can strum across the chords again. And then the second fret there on the A. Kind of a second version there. So we a little moving bass line. Alright, so that is the ending of the intro there. Um, so it was just ha ha just coming out of that uh, last the ending C F G seven little bass line then the the actual verse. But it's the same exact progression for the verse. So what we're doing is that 12 chord progression in the verse. We just we go we just repeated those 12 chords. We don't have that ending that we did. We just do those 12 chords, basically two and a half times until the third time through when we get to that D minor. We're gonna do a little bass line that takes us to the chorus. So it looks like this. So just see if you can see this chord progression the first time through.
the third time through, back to the C. So you start going through it like you're going to repeat it three times. So when you get to this D minor, right here, Takes, it does a little bass line. So that's based around a G, G7 as well too. You can strum a G real quick. And then, but you're really, the main thing you hear is that G, A, B. So that third fret on the low E, then open A, second fret on the B, just like we kind of ended the intro with. And then that takes us to the chorus that little line right there. So that's, it's kind of hard if you don't know the song well to know when to come in with that. So just think of it as that, that same 12 chord progression played two and a half times until you get the third time through. When you get to that D minor, you don't go, you don't go down to that. You go, you go that little three note bass line and that takes you back to the C. And we start the same chord progression again. Now we're in the chorus. And the chorus is the same. We do the full 12 chord progression, but we have a different ending than we had in the intro. So that looks like this. So that was like when he did, when he actually says a wider shade of pale. He that comes after you've done the full twelve chords, and we have this little ending on the chorus. So you do those twelve chords just one time through, and then you have a C major to an F. So kind of the same as the intro there, but then instead of going up to the G seven, it goes back to the C again, then to the G seven. Now, and this last G7, it kind of sounds better. You just do it like kind of a more normal way of playing the G7, which is third fret on the low E, second fret on the A, open D, open D and open G, third fret there on the B, first fret on the high E. just like the intro. And then the second verse, exact same as the first verse, two and a half times, that little bass line, then to the chorus. Exact same as the first chorus, one time through the 12 chord progression with that C, F, C, G7 ending. And so that song just kind of repeats on that loop, depending on if you're listening to the single version or whatever, it just kind of goes on forever. Um, he wrote a lot of lyrics to this and, and just really went off. And I don't know, there's some live versions of this. There's one, I think it's in Denmark. He did a performance with orchestra in Denmark in 2006. If you have not seen that, look it up. It's uh, absolutely incredible. Um, he was still performing incredibly, and then the orchestral arrangements and the choir with him and everything, it's just really incredible. So uh, I really recommend checking that out. All right, so that's it for A Wider Shade of Pale. Rest in peace, Gary Brooker. He does a great artist, and um, and this is just, just a, a song that's gonna be still known 500 years down the road, and it's, it's amazing that it's just one chord progression pretty much, but that, progression is just absolutely hypnotic as he goes through it just keeps feels like it, the music just keeps evolving and then the lyrics just kind of the melody and everything just flows over it. it's just really really beautiful and really well done all right so i hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com